My lords and members of the House of Commons, I am deeply grateful for the addresses of condolence by the House of Lords and the House of Commons, which so touchingly encompass what our late Sovereign, my beloved mother, the Queen, meant to us all. As Shakespeare says of the earlier Queen Elizabeth, she was a pattern to all princes living. As I stand before you today, I cannot help but feel the weight of history which surrounds us and which reminds us of the vital parliamentary traditions to which members of both houses dedicate yourselves with such personal commitment for the betterment of us all. Parliament is the living and breathing instrument of our democracy. That your traditions are ancient, we see in the construction of this great hall and the reminders of medieval predecessors of the office to which I have been called and the tangible connections to my darling late mother we see all around us, from the fountain in New Palace Yard, which commemorates the late Queen's Silver Jubilee, to the sundial in Old Palace Yard for the Golden Jubilee, the magnificent stained glass window before me for the Diamond Jubilee, and so poignantly and yet to be formally unveiled, your most generous gift to Her Late Majesty to mark the unprecedented Platinum Jubilee, which we celebrated only three months ago with such joyful hearts. The great bell of Big Ben, one of the most powerful symbols of our nation throughout the world and housed within the Elizabeth Tower, also named for my mother's diamond jubilee, will mark the passage of the late Queen's progress from Buckingham Palace to this Parliament on, on Wednesday. My Lords and members of the House of Commons, we gather today in remembrance of the remarkable span of the Queen's dedicated service to her nations and peoples. While very young, Her Late Majesty pledged herself to serve her country and her people and to maintain the precious principles of constitutional government which lie at the heart of our nation. This vow she kept with unsurpassed devotion. She set an example of selfless duty, which, with God's help and your counsels, I am resolved faithfully to follow. address by His Majesty the King, presented now to Speaker of the Lords and to the Speaker of the Commons. Before the National Anthem, played by the Band of the Household Cavalry. King's Bodyguard, King's Bodyguard, shut up!
round of the Household Cavalry, directed by Major Paul Collis Smith. And for many people, most people in this Westminster Great Hall, a first time to sing the national anthem to the words, God save our gracious King. The Lord Great Chamberlain leads His Majesty and Her Majesty the Queen Consort towards the north door. This is the start of a busy day. They depart from here to RAF North Holt, the RAF base, the oldest RAF base. In fact, it predates the creation of the RAF by three years. From there, they will fly to Edinburgh for a day of engagements that include an audience with Nicola Sturgeon, the Scottish First Minister, and a service of prayer at St Giles Cathedral. The relationship between the monarch and parliament, shown by the familiar faces here today, former prime ministers. And to the left of the king, the leaders of all the Westminster parties, Conservative, Labour, Democrat, Scottish Nationalist and Democratic Unionist Party. speech from the king reflecting on the many symbols of his mother in the palace of Westminster here in this hall that glorious window 1500 pieces constructed for the Queen's Diamond Jubilee in 2012 this hall dating back to the end of the 11th century when it was built the largest room in England, perhaps all of Europe. More than 900 years it has stood at the heart of the Palace of Westminster, witness to the evolution of our political system. The words that we've heard this morning, well, the language at times may have felt a little old-fashioned, but the addresses we heard delivered by the two speakers, a clear message, the expectation that the new monarch will act to protect the rights and freedoms of his subjects. Charles, now the King, King Charles III, shakes the hands of the speakers. It feels as if just briefly the maelstrom of daily political life, hardline positions taken by parties on one side or the other, has briefly been put aside here at Westminster this morning. As members of both houses start to consider the relationship Parliament will forge with the new King. and the Queen Consort into the car that will take them to RAF North Holt. From thence their journey will continue by air to Edinburgh. <laughs> 